Hey everyone, and welcome to Calculus BC. In today's episode, we're going to be revisiting limits and the use of L'Hopital's rule. So before we get started with anything that is computational, let's go ahead and review what L'Hopital's rule actually does. And what we're going to do is we're going to actually take our quintessential kind of indeterminate form. And so from here, I'm going to take the limit as x goes to 0 of sine x over x. Now remember, an indeterminate form is going to be one of that's 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity. The values can change, right? And that's why they're called indeterminate, right? Like we can't really determine exactly what they're going to be. Uh, it's going to require some algebraic manipulation for us to figure out exactly what's going to happen as x goes to 0 for both top and bottom. But we can agree that the top and bottom both go to 0. And when that happens, that means that there's usually going to be something that needs to be done with the limit in order to make it evaluatable. So uh, we all know where this goes, but let's just find out why it goes uh, where, it, where it claims to go. And, and uh, the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to go to my good old buddy Desmos here, and I'm going to go and graph sine of x real quick. And then I'm going to graph x. I'm going to look at them individually. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in really close on this point 0 here. And I'm using 0 because that's where the limit is being taken. And as you notice, as we get closer and closer to 0, it looks like the blue and the red seem to be overlapping really, really closely. And I'll go and just zoom out just a little bit here. That way I can get like 1 to 1. OK, great. And so from here, from here what happens is I'm going to go ahead and um, take a little snippet of this real quick here, a little square. And what we're going to do is we're going to actually analyze their slopes. Now, when L'Hopital was first kind of comprising this rule, what he found was that the ratio of the slopes was actually the same as what the limit value was approaching as it was approaching that particular value. And so what L'Hopital realized was that if you just zoomed in really closely on the place that, uh, that the limit was being indeterminate, if you looked at the ratio of the slopes, in, in this case, if you look at this one, it's going up a certain amount and to the right by the same amount, which makes the slope of both the line and the curve 1 over 1. Well, what he discovered was that since slope is invariably related to derivative, if he said, OK, if I just took the derivatives of each of each function here and then analyzed their slopes at that point in time, and found out the ratio between them, I could also find out where that function was approaching. And, uh, and when he took the derivative of the top and the bottom individually, of course not using quotient rule, what he realized was that when the limit was, at, was heading towards 0, after taking the derivative, he was in a safe place to let this happen. So he ended up getting 1 as his limit. And so this has come to be known as L'Hopital's rule, although I believe there are you know, re historical reports that say that L'Hopital actually didn't discover the rule. Uh, it, was, uh, it was another pair of uh, Italian mathematicians, but, uh, but that's probably a debate for a different kind of situation or a different video. Um, for purposes of this video, let's go ahead and take a look at the indeterminate for forms that we are familiar with. So indeterminate, indeterminate forms. The indeterminate forms that we are familiar with are going to be 0 over 0 and infinity over infinity. Uh, these are the ones that we are most familiar with from Calculus AB, and these are going to be the ones that we're going to try to work with most here in Calculus BC. Having said that, we are not going to always get 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity, uh, so I'll call this past, and I'll call this now present. The indeterminate forms that I definitely want us to pay attention to are things like 0 times infinity, uh, 1 to the infinity. That's a special one. Infinity minus infinity is also a good one. Right? So we'll pay attention mostly to these. Um, and the bottom line, the basic tenet of what we're doing today is how do I get these indeterminate forms to look like these indeterminate forms. And the reason why we want that to happen is because, remember, L'Hopital discovered that it was the ratio of their slopes that made him uh, that made him use his rule to find out where the function was actually going. So he never used it on infinity minus infinity, but he was able to manipulate 
infinity minus infinity to become something that he could actually work with and um, and make it ratio uh, ratio driven. So from here, let's go ahead and take a look at uh, something that we're more familiar with. We'll go and get started with the first example here. I'm going to get started with the limit as x goes to infinity of looks like 1 plus 1 over x raised to the x. Now, if you're at all familiar with this expression, um, then you're going to know it goes to a very particular number. Now, if you're not familiar with the expression, please feel free. Hit the pause button. And let x literally go to infinity. Just let x equal 10, then 100, then 1,000, then a million. Um, and then you you'll, get, um, you'll get a number that's, that's approaching on something that you should recognize. You should be getting e. All right, now that could happen one of two ways. Again, you could just let x go to, go to infinity, and it starts to approach that 2.718 number pretty quickly as x gets super, super large. But if we really, really wanted to prove this hard line and why it approaches e, and rather than just punching in a bunch of numbers into the calculator, we could actually use L'Hopital's rule on this thing because if you actually let x go to infinity, if you, if you literally let it happen, um, what's going to happen is this portion here as x goes to infinity will go to 0, leaving you with 1. This portion here goes to the infinity, which is exactly the situation here. It's an indeterminate form, 1 to the infinity. Now, uh, let's find out what happens as we approach uh, infinity for this expression, and hopefully we'll end up with e. That way we can uh, we can see how L'Hopital's rule would work in this situation. So again, right now I don't have anything that I can do with this, you know, but um, uh, other than just let the limit happen. But what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try and create a situation where I have a ratio of slopes. How do I do that? Well, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go and set y equal to 1 plus 1 over x to the x power. And hopefully that doesn't you know, confuse anybody too much because whenever we take the limit, we are taking the limit presumably of a function, and functions can be set as x equal to y. So hopefully there's no no harm, no foul there. Um, what this allows me to do is it allows me to take the natural log of both sides. So I'll have the natural log of y equaling the natural log of 1 plus 1 over x to the x power. Log rules allow me to bring down the x, and I'm going to say the natural log of y equals x times the natural log of 1 plus 1 over x, uh, and there we go. Now remember, what I'm going to do now is this whole time I have been trying to evaluate what the limit is. So I'm going to go and take the limit of either side. So the limit as x goes to infinity here, the limit as x goes to infinity here. Now if I just let the limit happen on the left side, uh, it's no worries. The limit as x goes to infinity of an ln of y function y might as well be a constant, so, it, so this one's not going to matter. I'm actually going to ignore this piece for a little while. But this thing here on the right side, if I let x go to infinity, this piece here goes to 0, which makes me have ln of 1, which means the entire ln of 1 piece will actually indeed go to 0. But x will be going to infinity, which is infinity times 0, which is another type of indeterminate form. And so again, we're getting a little bit closer to a, uh, to a ratio here, but not quite yet. Um, again, I said I was going to ignore the left side for now. We will talk about him in a little bit. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go and create the ratio. And the way I do that is I'm going to say ln of 1 plus 1 over x all over x to the negative 1 power. Now I've got something over something else, but that still hasn't quite gotten me to infinity over infinity or 0, zero over 0. But let's see what happens if I... If I reestablish this in a different way, if I let uh, the limit as x goes to infinity of ln of 1 plus 1 over x over x to the negative 1 is really 1 over x, right? And if I was to let this limit happen, we'd get 0 up top, 0 on bottom. Now I'm in a L'Hopital's ready situation here because I've got an indeterminate form that actually is ratioized. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to rewrite this one more time. And I know I'm rewriting this a lot, but I need to show you guys this from a couple of different angles here. I'm going to call this ln of 1 plus x to the negative 1 over x to the negative 1. This just helps my derivative out a little bit easier. Uh, this is going to be the limit as x goes to infinity. Careful, there is some chain rule going on here. So I'm going to get 1 over 1 plus x to the negative 1 times the derivative of the inside is going to be negative x to the negative 2 divided by the derivative of the bottom, negative x to the negative 2. I'm hoping you see why now I wrote the ln the way I did. And it's because these x to the negative 2s are going to cancel each other out. 
and I'll go ahead and give myself some more space here. I'm going to say the limit as x goes to infinity of looks like 1 over 1 over and again I'm going to I'm, or 1 plus rather. I'm going to rewrite him as 1 over x. So now I feel like I'm in a safe place to let this limit happen. As x goes to infinity, this guy goes to 0 and I get 1 and all seems good. However, 1 is not your answer. Remember, we expected to get e out of this. So how do I do that? Well, remember, the 1 is really just the result of the limit of the right side. Remember, we were taking the limit of two sides here. So the limit of the right side equals 1. We have the limit of the left side. The limit as x goes to infinity of ln of y. And we know the limit of the right side is, in fact, 1. So now from here, I'm going to go ahead and just kind of evaluate this. And what I get is I get the ln of y equals 1. I've got to change forms because I'm dealing with a logarithmic equation here. And so I'm going to take e to the 1 equals y. So y equals e. And that is why the limit as x goes to infinity of 1 plus 1 over x to the x power, if this equals y, then the limit of that y gives me e. And that is considered more of a hard line kind of proof as to why 1 plus 1 over x to the x power uh, becomes e. But of course, you know, as x approaches infinity, we saw that happen in honors pre-calc, uh, we would end up approaching e anyway. So um, I'll be right back with a couple more examples. We're going to do some more algebraic manipulation to get this stuff into L'Hopital's ready form. I'll be back. All right, everyone, let's take a look at this first example here. We're taking the limit as x goes to 0 from the right of 1 over x equal, uh, sorry, minus uh, 1 over e to the x minus 1. So if I just let this limit happen, right, if I look at 1 over x as I approach uh, 0 from the right, that's going to go to infinity because his graph will do that. This guy will approach 1 over 0, so that's going to go to infinity also. I mean, he's, he's probably going to do something like this. Um, and so what we have is we have infinity minus infinity here, and that's going to be kind of a bad situation for us to be in. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and reconcile this. How do I make this a singular ratio. That way I can do infinity over infinity or 0 over 0. Well, it's going to require a little bit of uh, integrated 1 here. I'm going to have to find a common denominator, which I believe is going to be x parentheses e to the x minus 1. And in order for that to happen, the left side needed an e to the x minus 1, the right side needed an x. So I'm getting e to the x minus 1 minus x, and it's the limit as x goes to 0 from the right. And now let's see what happens if I let x go to 0. What will happen is I'll get 1 minus 1, which is 0, minus 0. So I'm getting 0 over 0. So now this is L'Hopital's ready, right? We, we can definitely initiate L'Hopital's rule on this thing. So the limit as x goes to 0 from the right. Uh, luckily, the 1's going to go away. e to the x's derivative is itself minus 1 over, please don't forget, there is product rule here. So first unchanged, and then derivative of the second is going to be simply e to the x plus second unchanged, which is going to be e to the x minus 1 times the derivative of the first, which will just be 1. If I let x go to 0, I get 0 up top. And looks like I'll end up with uh, 0 here. So what's going to happen here is this 1 is going to minus from this 1. These guys are going to become 0. So I'm still at 0 over 0. So it looks like I'm going to have to do L'Hopital's rule one more time. So L'Hopital's rule again, limit as x goes to 0 from the right. Derivative of this guy is going to be itself just e to the x. Again, product rule here. So first unchanged times derivative of the second plus second unchanged times derivative of the first plus the other e to the x's derivative. So there's quite a bit of e to the xing going on up in here. So I could call this e to the x over, looks like x e to the x plus 2 e to the x. Now, actually, what I could do if I really wanted to, let's carry down this limit sign here, is I actually could factor out an e to the x from the bottom if I wanted to and call him just x plus 2 and then cancel him out. And so what I have is the limit as x goes to 0 from the right. Now, if you didn't do that, don't worry about it. You would have ended up, you'll end up in the same spot here. You're now in a safe place to let this limit happen. You're going to get 1 over 2 as your answer, even if you didn't factor out the e to the x. Hopefully, you'd see that the e to the 0 would go to 1, and then the rest would follow in suit. So let's go ahead and take a look at our next example here. Again, pretty simple. A lot of the L'Hopital's problems that we're looking at revolve around the notion of how do I create a situation of 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity 
based on the situation that they gave to us. I mean, if I just, uh, if you look at number three here, if I just let the limit happen, this guy's going to zero. But if you know anything about an LN graph, he's going to negative infinity. So again, zero times infinity, how do I deal with this? Well, I'm going to first create the ratio, right? I'm going to say the limit as x goes to zero from the right. Of the two that could potentially move to the bottom, I'm pretty sure x is going to be the one that I want to move down there. Just so that I can double check and make sure that uh, we do end up having a you know an indeterminate form that we can work with, I am going to go ahead and just kind of rework him. So now I've got infinity here, or negative infinity here, right? If I approach zero from the right side, this is infinity. So infinity over infinity, we're good. We've, we've got our indeterminate form, which means this is now lope tolerable, right? And so limit as x goes to zero from the right of 1 over x over negative x to the negative 2. Now I'll go ahead and uh, rework him. That way he can uh, we can see what this guy becomes. Now, I'm of the elk that I tend to not, oh, I try not to overuse L'Hopital's rule that much because uh, I do like the algebraic manipulation component. I mean, a four-layered fraction isn't really too bad here. The limit as x goes to zero from the right of one over x times, looks like negative x squared over one. Those guys are gonna cancel, kind of. And I have the limit as x goes to zero from the right of simply just negative x, which I believe puts me in the safe place to let the limit happen. I'm just gonna get zero. All right, I'll be back with another example real quick. Here comes another example that is worth talking about. Um, and it's uh, the limit as x goes to infinity of this guy minus this guy. And if we were to let the limit happen, we would have infinity minus infinity, again, an indeterminate form. And so the way I'm going to go and get this into a ratio is I'm going to multiply by its conjugate. I'm going to say the square root of x squared minus 3x plus x on top and bottom, because uh, you definitely want to make sure that it's ratioized. Since you're multiplying by a conjugate, it's going to be x squared minus 3x. Uh, looks like that's going to be uh, minus x squared up top over the square root of x squared minus 3x plus x on bottom. Again, still limit as x goes to infinity. The x squareds are going to go away. And what I've got is I've got the limit as x goes to infinity of negative 3x over rad x squared minus 3x plus x. Now, at this point, what you've got is you do have L'Hopital's rule uh, that you could use. Because technically, at this point, now you have infinity over infinity. I would caution you on this one, though. The overuse of L'Hopital's rule might not be the best thing. Um, I think that something a little more direct, although it's something you guys haven't seen in a long time, might be more helpful than this. I'm going to multiply the bottom by 1 over rad x squared, and I'm going to multiply the top by its equivalent, which is 1 over absolute value of x. Again, this is a version of 1 that you're not used to seeing, but I'll go ahead and say the limit as x goes to infinity of negative 3x over absolute value of x over a big hunkin' square root of x squared over x squared minus 3x over x squared plus x over and in this case, instead of calling him rad x squared, I'll probably just call him absolute value of x. Just I'll just go and simplify that square root of x here, uh, square root of x squared. So what does this simplify into? It's going to be the limit as x goes to infinity of negative 3x over absolute value of x over a big hunkin' square root of 1 minus 3 over x plus x over absolute value of x. Well, I feel like now that the dominant terms are now eliminated, right, the dominant terms being the highest power exponents, I can now let this limit happen. This guy goes to 0 as x goes to infinity. This guy goes to 1 as x goes to infinity. And this guy will go to 1 as x goes to infinity, but he's being multiplied by a negative 3. So negative 3 over rad 1 plus 1, which is negative 3 over 1 plus 1, which is negative 3 over 2. So with problems that look like that, that require conjugate multiplication because of the infinity minus infinity, I would actually discourage you from using L'Hopital's rule because you know, in, in my past experience, you end up in this like weird infinite loop of L'Hopital's rule, plus there's chain rule involved here you know, when you, when, you, uh, when you derive the bottom. It's just kind of a nightmare. So I would discourage it, not that I'm saying it's wrong, but I would, I would definitely discourage it and use the tools you already know. So I think that'll wrap it up for this episode, uh, as always. Please leave comments or questions in the comments area. 
I will see you all in the next episode.